Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm Glenda and I love sharing all things DIY here on my channel as well as furniture flipping. Currently working on remodeling my primary bathroom. Last week, I continued to make progress by repairing the main wall by adding new sheetrock. Although it wasn't really new because it was actually scraps that I had left over from when I did my laundry room remodel. But it needed to be done because I had ripped it off in order to transform the plumbing from one seat to two. I also taped and floated. My intentions are to turn this empty space into an accent tile wall. So I didn't really care for the tape and floating to be perfectly finished, if that makes sense. Lastly, I began building out the cabinet for my dirty laundry chute, which I finished out this week. So join me in this week's video as I share how I built this storage cabinet for my dirty laundry. After drawing out my circle for where we would drop the laundry into, I moved on to cutting it out. To make it easier, I drilled a hole first and then followed the outline using my jigsaw. I then moved on to cutting down to size the backboard for this cabinet base since it needs to be installed before I can set the top in place. Remember, I created my grooves where I could just slide it into. I added some wood glue before adding the top and securing it with pocket hole screws. To smooth and round out the edges of the circle I cut out, I used my router and then sanded everything smooth. Now that the cabinet base was done, I moved on to cutting the boards I needed for the upper storage cabinet. I cut them down to 16 inches wide and one sheet was just enough to cut both sides, one top, one shelf, and two adjustable shelves. Thank you to Simple and Opulence for sponsoring this video. Simple and Opulence is a lifestyle brand that offers high quality products, including bedding, bath, and home accessories made with the finest materials, including 100% linen at affordable prices. I have their duvet cover set that comes with four pillow shams and one duvet cover. They offer 11 different colors, including this beautiful, warm, neutral beige. This fabric is made of 55% linen and 45% cotton that helps make you feel cool in the summer and warm in the winter, making it suitable for all seasons. Because of the blend of fabrics, it's more breathable, more durable than other fabrics, and it gets softer with every wash while still retaining its linen texture. Duvet cover comes with four inner corner ties to secure the duvet and minimize shifting, and a hidden button closure at the bottom. The pillow shams have no zipper, but instead have an overlap closure design, making it easy and convenient to put it in or take the pillow out. Like mentioned before, they offer lots of linen products that are all eco-friendly and skin-friendly. All of their products are OCO Tax certified, ensuring these textile products have been tested and certified to be free of harmful substances and are safe for human use, promoting sustainable and responsible practices in the textile industry. 
If you're interested, visit the link down in the description to get your hands on your very own Simple and Opulence products at an affordable price. Now back to the video. For the shells, I did have to remove at least an inch in order to get them to sit flush with the front frame. I ripped down 4 inch boards for my back support boards and then moved on to creating the grooves for the back panel to slide it into just like I did with all the other base cabinets I've ever built. This is the reason I had to reduce the size of the shelves because I had to account for the backboard and the support boards taking up space. I then created pocket holes using my pocket hole jig on my top, the bottom shelf, and the support boards. I could finally start assembling everything together. First I added the top and the top support board and then measured and marked where I would be placing my bottom shelf as well as the adjustable shelves. Once I had the bottom shelf secured, using a Craig jig, I created my shelf pins on both sides.
I'm just sitting here editing this week's video, which is the video you're watching right now. And I'm waiting on my manager to show up or wake up from her nap so that we can go pick up samples. I'm wanting to go look at different stores, see what they have to offer for different samples for that accent wall, for the flooring, and also for the bathtub area because I am going to be doing a full tile surround surrounding the bathtub. I did order some samples online, but I I don't know when they're gonna arrive. It didn't give me an estimated delivery time and I've been waiting and they're still not here. So I don't wanna wait anymore until those come in. If I can find something in store that I like, then I'll just go with that. For the accent wall, I'm, I want something warmer, something beige, something creamy, ivory even I'm okay with to help kind of balance out the darkness of the vanity. For the vanity, I want something very rich, just something that stands out. And then for the flooring, I want something that is also wood toned. So I'm going to be doing a wood like tile. So I need to know what color I'm going to be staining my, my vanities. Anyways, as soon as my manager gets here, then we will head out and go look for samples. The tile shop had so many options to choose from and it's where I picked up most of the accent wall as well as the bathroom surround samples. Sadly, they didn't have anything I liked for the flooring. Flooring decor was the same thing as far as flooring went and they didn't have much but I did end up purchasing the adhesive tile mat to try out instead of the traditional mortar. Once we got back from shopping, I went back to the main base cabinet and cut out the spot that was interfering with the vanity top sitting flushed using my router, adjusting it little by little. I also secured everything to the wall and then I added some silicone before adding the vanity top back into place for good. And this is where we're at right now. Okay, got it, Liz. Oof. I am really torn between this one and this one. Let me know what you think. Let me know. Which one would you choose? Would you choose this Subway traditional tile or this smaller square tile? So remember, I'm being completely transparent with you guys and sharing how much I'm spending on this project so that it can be relatable to you guys. This week I did make additional purchases, so let's go ahead and go over them now. I have my handy notes here because I'm not gonna remember all of the numbers, but last week I spent a total of 1,183 and 24 cents. But right after I talked to you guys and I let you know that that's how much my total was at, I did end up buying two sheets of quarter inch oak plywood and an additional sheet of three quarter inch plywood that totaled out to $182.90. Then this week I bought tile samples from online that were $4.33. I bought additional tile samples from the tile shop that were $12.97. Another set of tile samples plus the tile adhesive mat, two of those, which is quite pricey actually, and totaled out to $80.59 from Floor & Decor. The last couple of things that I purchased was from Amazon, including shelf pins and some edge banding for my shelves that I will be building, and that totaled out to $30.33. Bringing our total so far to $1,494.36, just very shy of $1,500. So the whole point of sharing how much I'm spending on this project is so that you can realistically see how much a project of this size would cost 
cost you if you were doing it yourself without contracting any outside work unless it's absolutely necessary. I haven't crossed that bridge just yet. So if I do within this project, of course, I will share how much I spend if I contract that work out. So I hope you find this information helpful. I know that it can be helpful for some people who are maybe thinking about renovating a space fully. Um, because it does cost money. It's not cheap, especially nowadays. Materials just aren't the same price as they were a couple of years back. I will continue to keep you updated every single week on purchases that I make, how much I'm spending, and what we're totally now as we get closer to the end of this project. I want to thank you for sticking around and continuing to support my videos through all of the projects that I've created so far. And I appreciate that a lot of you understand that I'm only able to work a couple of hours on the project itself, including filming and editing everything in order to get a video out every single week. So thank you for being here. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the steps leading up to the big reveal of this huge bathroom remodel. I love y'all, be kind, and I'll see y'all next week. Bye. Love, I don't know what else I can do. It's hopeless too.